groupies, passionate and dedicated fans who will go to great lengths to support and connect with their favorite musicians. These young and fearless women have made their mark in the world of classic rock, leaving a trail of stories that are still remarkable to this day. With so many exceptional women, this is now the continuation of our journey through the lives of these groupies who turned the rock and roll world upside down with their unforgettable escapades. Tawny Katane. Best known as one of the most popular 80s video vixens, Tawny Katane was an iconic figure in the world of classic rock. From the early age of 14, she managed to go backstage at a Peter Frampton concert, and the rest was history for her. As she saw firsthand how things happened backstage, she was instantly drawn into the magic. Upon finding out that being the lead singer's girlfriend is what gets you everywhere, she started to aspire to be exactly like that. As early as high school, Tawny dated rap guitarist and founder Robin Crosby. She later appeared on the cover of the band's debut EP. Tawny's best known for being the face of the White Snake's music videos, particularly the iconic Here I Go Again. Eventually, she dated and married White Snake frontman David Coverdale, although they divorced in 1991. She's been linked to prominent rock stars such as Tommy Lee and John Taylor. Like going for it. Anyway, I gotta say, Kai Ahrens was a guy who did yeah. this cover. Roxana Shirazi. Roxana Shirazi isn't just the first name that'll come to mind when it comes to groupies. After all, she was born and raised in Iran in a traditional Muslim family. She moved to the UK in the late 1970s, and there, she quickly familiarized herself with some of the biggest acts of the 80s. As a teenager, she started entertaining people at underground clubs and entertainment hotspots in the city. And that's exactly where she started hooking up with big and some small stars. Some of the notable personalities that she was connected to were bands such as Guns N' Roses, Avenged Sevenfold, and Skid Row. Some of the biggest names she hooked up with included Nikki Six, Matt Sorum, and Steven Adler. Roxana was best known for her willingness to engage in any kind of sexual activity with rock stars as long as they'd shower with gifts and luxuries in return. Her memoir, The Last Living Slut, Born in Iran, Bred Backstage, gives a good picture of her journey as a groupie. All about those old family members, right? You want to get to some juicier stuff. So let me Cleo Odzer. As someone who worked in the music section for a small newspaper in New York, Cleo was given access to many artists, which led to her life as a groupie. She's best known for being allegedly engaged to the nice frontman Keith Emerson. However, the engagement didn't go anywhere thanks to an article in Time magazine that tagged Cleo as a super groupie. Once Keith saw the article, he broke things off. Meanwhile, Cleo continued making connections with other musicians. She claimed to have had relations with Terry Reid and members of Deep Purple, among others. In 1969, she released The Groupies, a spoken word album in which she and her fellow groupies discussed the ins and outs of their world. It's one of the first true first-person accounts of life as a classic rock groupie. After her life as a groupie, she went on to become an author and anthropologist who gained fame for reporting on the hippie culture in Goa, India. Morgana Welch Morgana Welch was the kind of girl who did school just to hang out with her best friend at the Sunset Strip. What really opened her to the groupie life was the fact that her best friend lived near the Riot House, which was a place where many popular musicians stayed while traveling through the town. Morgana, along with her best friend Tyla, eventually became part of the LA Queens, a group of baby groupies. By the time she was 18, Morgana was a regular at all the Sunset Strip's hottest clubs. She said that she connected with the bands by dancing at their shows. Among her conquests were members of Pretty Things and New York Dolls, as well as Led Zeppelin's bassist John Paul Jones. Miss Christine Miss Christine, or Christine Ann Fricka, is best remembered as the glamour icon of the Laurel Canyon music scene. She's the symbol of decadence and female empowerment. Miss Christine was a pivotal member of the GTOs, Girls Together Outrageously, a group of women closely associated with a legendary musician, Frank Zappa. Their distinctive style made them a known presence in the music scene. She's also been amused to Alice Cooper along with other musicians such as Todd Rundgren, Arthur Brown, and Russell Mao. Unfortunately, Miss Christine passed away at the young age of 22. However, she had a lasting impact on the music and counterculture scene of the early 70s. She's known for her shining personality and her powerful vocals. Um, sort of highlighted these girls as being groupies, but they really weren't, they were just models. Lori Maddox. Like Morgana, Lori Maddox was also a member of the LA-based baby groupies. At the young age of only 14 years old, Lori already found herself with a groupie career. 
It was also then that she allegedly lost her virginity to David Bowie. In an interview, she recalled the event saying, The way it happened was so beautiful. I remember him looking like God and having me over the table. Who wouldn't want to lose their virginity to David Bowie? Soon after launching her journey as a groupie, Lori met Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page in a nightclub. It eventually led to an on and off affair with a prominent rock star. According to Lori, the relationship didn't go without any conflicts, especially since Jimmy tried to limit Lori's interaction with other members of the band. Despite that, Lori experienced touring with the band for nearly a year. She also inspired the classic Sick Again. After splitting up with Jimmy, Lori claimed to have dated Mick Jagger while his wife Bianca was preparing for surgery. Looking back at her escapades as a groupie, there are definitely no regrets for Lori. She recalls, I saw the greatest music ever. I got to hang out with some of the most amazing, most beautiful, most charismatic men in the world. I went to concerts and limos with police escorts. Am I going to regret this? No. See, I am a plaster caster of certain body parts belonging to men and women. Cynthia Plaster Caster Alberton. Cynthia Alberton, best known as Cynthia Plaster Caster, remains one of the most famous and influential groupies of the classic rock era. All of this is due to her signature that set her apart from others. She made plaster casts depicting the each rock star she slept with. Nobody had a better signature than Cynthia Plastercaster. Despite being a shy girl, she wanted to get the attention of cute British boys. So she knew that the only way to go about it was through a goofy and funny way. Cynthia decided that she would meet musicians by offering to make molds of Her first subject was Mark Lindsay from Paul Revere and the Raiders. Although the plaster didn't exactly work the way she wanted, she lost her virginity to the singer. Her first successful plaster masterpiece was of Jimi Hendrix. Eventually, she made more than 12 plaster casts of all the men she slept with during her groupie life. Gene Simmons of Kiss, Wayne Kramer MC5, Pete Shelley of Buzzcocks were among the plaster casts of Cynthia. It wasn't only through her cast that she immortalized herself. Cynthia made a legacy by being cemented in Kiss's song Plaster Caster and Jim Croce's Five Short Minutes. I mean, I, I arrange recording, I arrange gigs, I arrange... Nancy Spungen. Many people know Nancy Spungen because of her whirlwind life, tragic death, and relationship with Sex Pistols bassist Sid Vicious. However, despite her tragic life, she's among the most famous groupies in punk and rock history. She's also well known as a style icon for the music scene during her time. Not many know that Nancy wasn't just a girlfriend. Before Sid Vicious, Nancy was a well-known groupie who hung out with the Ramones, Aerosmith, and the New York Dolls. She started as a groupie at a young age when she moved to New York after being kicked out of the University of Colorado Boulder. Nancy met Sid Vicious in 1977. They then went into a toxic relationship that was fueled by drug addiction. In October of 1978, Nancy was found dead due to a single stab wound to the abdomen. Sid Vicious was arrested and charged with her murder but he died of a heroin overdose while awaiting trial. Beyond her association with Sid Vicious and the tragic fate she suffered, she'd already established herself as a notable and beloved figure within the music scene. There you have it. These captivating stories of classic rock groupies paint a vivid portrait of an era marked by excess, rebellion, and an unquenchable thirst for the rock and roll lifestyle. Each of these women made their own legacy in the music industry of their time. These groupies, muses, queens, and insiders all contributed to the mystique and allure of the classic rock genre. They have inspired the bands of their time and the women after them. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to know more, check out our earlier video on other legendary groupies in the world of rock and roll.